I'm always fascinated by Mary's encounter with God. She asks the Holy Spirit, the, the angel, how these things will be, that she will be carrying this Messiah. The angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born, will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. What an amazing verse. No God, word from God will never fail. His word will not return to him void, the scripture says. But it will accomplish that to which he has purposed it. The Christmas story is full of amazing encounters. If you don't believe in the miraculous, don't believe in Christmas. Angels, visions. It wasn't that God hadn't spoken in the past. Oh, quite clearly it's spoken through his prophets. It's spoken through the whole of the Old Testament. It's been all written down for us, all the details. But at this time, around the birth of Jesus, something began to stir afresh. Men began to encounter God in a new way. And that is my prayer for 2017, that although God has promised us stuff in the past, that we'll have God encounters in this house that will take us beyond beyond where we've ever been before. That, that we're visited by angels, not because we want to see any angels particularly, but they're the ministers to those of the heirs of salvation. This is part of normal Christian life. You know, you only have to look at the New Testament to find out, you know, Peter is thrown into prison, uh, Paul and Silas in prison, and angels show up, and all sorts of things happen. Read the book of Acts. This is normal Christianity. We've left the norm behind for mediocrity. And I believe that God is again afresh on the move, and we need to stir our hearts. I'm just, uh, it makes me laugh how she tries to work it out. How will these things be? I don't know about you, but sometimes we try to give the God the natural answer. This can't happen because, listen, he's God. And I think for some of us, as we look over our lives right now, I was just, as we were just singing that song, Who Is He in Yonder Store? He talked about the sick and the suffering. I believe that we are to engage, and we are engaging in the commission that Jesus called us to, the very one that he took the scroll and prophesied from. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to open the eyes of the blind, aren't we, at the Beacon Centre, to, to bind up the brokenhearted. All of these things now we are positioned to do. And yet it seems like a big challenge, doesn't it? How will these things be? Well, I'll tell you something, the spirit of the Lord is coming upon us and the Most High is going to overshadow us. I believe that with all our hearts. What has been conceived in you is by the Holy Spirit. When God speaks a word, we allow, have to allow the Holy Spirit to do what God wants to do through us. You can't make it happen. If we could have made it happen, we'd have made it happen a long, long time ago. If it was £10,000 to get a soul into the kingdom, we'd have scrimped and scraped and saved that much more money that we could ever think of to try and get people saved, but we can't do it. But we are now totally reliant, I believe, on the Holy Spirit. And more and more, 2017, as we believe and trust God for an overflow from this place, we have to trust him that God will do what only God can do. That we can't make these things happen. This young virgin had no way of any of this happening to her in the natural. And yet God speaks and does incredible things. What does God say? My ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. How will this be? Because I'm a virgin. She keeps stating the natural. And that's all we ever do. We, well, that can't happen, God, because. How about this obstacle? I want to tell you today our God can do the impossible. And he has proved it again and again and again. And the Holy Spirit's going to come and back up the word of God, I do believe, this year. For no word from God will ever fail. I like what Mary says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled in me. That's my only prayer for my life and your life this coming year. May the word of the Lord what God is speaking and what God has spoken and continues to speak be fulfilled in me. I don't know about you, but I want what God is saying over my life. But so many people have got so upset about what other people have said over them. So many people have been destroyed what people have said about them. But I tell you what, our God has come to us and just like Mary this morning, he said, you're highly favoured. I am with you and I'm going to bless you. And this year, what I've put in you, I'm going to bring to pass if you let my Holy Spirit work in you. Don't try and make it happen yourself. 
And we're going to start to look at the book of Nehemiah and see a supernatural building of the walls. It wasn't down to Nehemiah's technical ability or the fact that he was a master architect. But again, he said a resounding yes to God and let the work of God be done in him. So I think our, our response this Christmas time and into this new year is, may the word of the Lord be fulfilled in me. Do something. Thank God for what he's done this year, but believe it for more next year. Just as a little taster, me and Steve Goodall have been having a little chat over the last couple of days. Our first conference is going to be talking to people from other nations and races that are already living in our nation. And we've got to talk about people, we're going to look at Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Polish people. And we've got speakers that are witnessing and bringing all of these people to Christ now in our time. Because we want to overflow. I'm not content this be a white middle class church. There are so many people around that need something from God, from every kingdom, tongue, tribe and nation. It would be great, wouldn't it, to look out and see this diverse church full of all sorts of people. And that's where we're going. May the word of the Lord be fulfilled in us. Let's just pray, shall we? We thank you this morning, Lord, for what you have done. And we praise you for what you are going to do. We thank you for the breakthrough. But now, Lord, we're believing for the overflow. The overflow that comes from touching you afresh and the overflow that is going to leave this church and go into areas around about this manor of Sedgley where men and women, boys and girls are going to be saved, touched and delivered and brought to faith in you. So Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you this is all about you. We thank you that you have chosen us for this time like you chose Mary for the time that you chose her. Thank you, Lord. And we just want to respond wholeheartedly as she did. Be it done to us, Lord, according to your word. Keep on speaking, Lord. Lord, this year, send the angelic among us. Send the visitations from God among us. Lord, let people see visions. Your old men dream dreams and your young men see visions. Lord, I, let our sons and daughters prophesy this year. Lord, I just pray that you will come in a fresh way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.